Hi everyone, Rob here again from Power Learning Solutions with another instructional design tip to help make your life a little bit easier as you are designing, building and launching your own courses. Now, what I want to talk about today is how to avoid catastrophic failure when you're building a course. Murphy's Law has it that if something can go wrong, eventually it will go wrong. And I had a situation this morning working with one of my instructional design students where the worst possible case scenario did happen. They ended up in a situation like this where there was absolutely nothing left visible in their course. So before I show you how to avoid winding up in a scenario like this, let's take a look at how this actually happened so that you can avoid getting into this situation yourself. So I have got a copy of one of my sample canvas courses here. Now a lot of these tips will apply no matter what your learning management system is. So uh, just because we're using canvas doesn't mean the same doesn't apply to Moodle or Brightspace or Sakai or one of the other uh, major learning management systems. But in this case we are working with Canvas and uh, using the free for teachers installation, which causes uh, one of the problems that the student is encountering. Uh, the student had gone through the process of building their course, just like I have this one built. So the, the home page, all of the module content, everything was built out for a pilot module with about an hour and a half's worth of student interaction. We uh, develop only about uh, 90 minutes or so, an hour to 90 minutes or so, a module or so for pilot testing purposes, so that if this worst case scenario, this catastrophic failure happens, we don't need to go back and rebuild the entire course. We could just go back and, and work on the one module and then the rest of the content is still to be built anyway, so we're not going too far back. But in this case, the student had put together their pilot module, had gotten some peer feedback on it from an instructional design perspective, and was getting ready to pilot test their course with a group of random classmates starting today. To get ready for it, what they decided uh, they should do was to wipe out all the old discussion posts and things like that, which is uh, a good thing to do. Make sure you have a clean copy for pilot testing, but they wound up accidentally hitting this reset course content button that's here. Now let's take a look at what happens when you do that. You get this warning. They uh, went ahead anyway, hit the reset course content button and wound up in this scenario here. Absolutely nothing left in the course. So this is what we call a catastrophic failure. Murphy's Law has happened. Nothing is there. Because they are in Canvas free for teachers, there's no admin support, no IT desk that uh, they can call for help restoring this module. Now, the good folks at Instructure, maybe you can give them a call or, or contact them via email, get your content uh, restored, but it might take a little bit longer than if you were working at your own institution. The first step to try, uh, if you run into this scenario, you don't have a backup of your course, is to call the IT support team at your institution. What they can probably do is go into their server archives, check out the previous states of your course, and restore it back to the state that it was in yesterday. But you need that server level admin access to do that. So a Canvas installation or a Moodle installation or Brightspace at your own institution, they should have that level of access and they can go in and check those archives and restore it. With Canvas free for teachers, they say it's irreversible. You might be able to get a hold of their tech support team and get that restored, but it might take a while if it's possible at all. So what can we do to avoid being in a situation like this? Well, your first step to avoiding winding up in a scenario where you have nothing left in your course like this is to make sure that you have a backup copy before you go live with your pilot testing students or with your real class. What I typically recommend for my students in my instructional design course is that once they have built their pilot module, they make a second copy of it. They publish that second copy and they share the link to the second copy with the students in their class. 
What this does for us, it gives us two copies of the course. One is your master copy. It's clean. There's no student data in there, no student records. Anytime you go to run that course again in the future, you just make a copy of the original course, update your dates and, and due dates and all of those things. You're good to go. In this case, we weren't in that situation. We wound up in a scenario where the student email server was undergoing some upgrades over the weekend leading up to pilot testing. So we all shared our original uh, course shell links. And of course, the student wound up in this scenario with nothing left in their original shell and no backup. All right, how do we make a backup copy of our course? Uh, well, for Canvas, it's pretty easy. The same applies if you're in Moodle there uh, or D2L. There are options under the course settings to make copies of your course, to, to archive them. So I'm going to go into the original copy of this sample pilot module here. And I'm going to go to my course settings. And here's where you see the option to make a copy of the course. That's if you want to run another section of it and keep this one as clean. There's also the copy here to export your course content. So if I click on that, I'm going to create an export of the course. It's going to take a couple of uh, seconds to run through. It might take a few minutes, depending on how big your course is. And it will email you a copy of the zip file that you can download. It will also give you a copy that uh, you can download from here. So my course has been exported. If I go back to my settings and I look at my export course content, uh, there is a course export from less than a minute ago. I can now download it and I can go back into my copy of the course where I had my catastrophic failure, which is my demo copy here. I can go to my settings and now I can import that course content. So in Canvas, it gives you an option to copy it from another existing course or to upload a zip file into a folder or a Canvas course export package. So I'm going to select that. I am going to choose my file. It's under my downloads. So I'll go to my downloads folder, find my copy, open, all content, import. It's going to upload that course for me. Now I have got my copy. OK, so what do we do? If we are in that situation that uh, this student was in, there's no backup copy and no second course shell, and there's no admin support to help us out with, uh, with restoring a previous version of the course. Well, in that case, we need to go back to the drawing board. So what we need to do then is rebuild all of our content. And this is where having a good blueprint or storyboard for your course that you were working from when you were building comes in handy. So here I have got a storyboard for a version of this course that I built a while back. This is for the full 13 weeks of it, not just the pilot module, but all of my content is in here. So if I'm looking at rebuilding week one, here is all of the content for all of the pages. I've got it all scripted. I have the names of any uh, media that I have here with links to them. So it's just a matter then of going in and rebuilding your pages, copy pasting the text, going through the same processes that you would go through if you were building the course from scratch. This is not an ideal scenario. It takes time to go back in and rebuild all these pages. But if you have a really good storyboard, then it shouldn't take you too long to rebuild things. Um, when I built this course, it took me about six months to design this blueprint, going back and forth with all of the stakeholders, making sure the blueprint was what everybody wanted out of the course, but I was able to build the entire 13 weeks worth of content in two or three days worth of work with copy pasting all the scripts and adding all of the media in. So worst case scenario, you set yourself back a few days, but you've got everything ready to go and you can rebuild it.